Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the suicide of Rachel Foster. Now it's taken me a lot longer to make this video than usual. That's because when I make a review video, I want to outright recommend the game in question. With the time it takes to make a video, I want the end product to be a positive. I don't want to spend that time being negative. So when I first completed this game, probably a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago from this video, I felt very disappointed. We'll get into some of those reasons a little bit later on in the video. But the fact that we're here, we have a new review video, it means that I am going to be recommending the game, but it does have some flaws. It could have been so much better. Let's get into it. The Suicide of Rachel Foster is a story-driven walking simulator. It shares a lot of similarities with Firewatch. That's not going to be the last time I mention Firewatch, but for now, let's focus on the game in hand. The main setting of the game takes place during the winter at a hotel that's been closed for a number of years. We play the role of Nicole. My dear Nicole. Who the fuck's Nicole? I thought it was Rachel. This game's called Rachel, isn't it? Suicide of Rachel. Who the fuck's Nicole? Nicole has grown up in this hotel because her parents used to own and operate it. But after the tragedy that happened to Rachel, things for the hotel were never the same. Nicole ends up moving away and doesn't come back to the hotel until the present day. The reason that Nicole ends up coming back to the hotel is quite a simple one. We're here to sell it. We're due to meet a lawyer who's going to go through some more documents with us. We're going to collect some personal items and we're going to walk away and never look back at this hotel. That's the original plan. The game's opening sequence where you find out a little bit more about Nicole and we, you know, we end up getting to the hotel is a really good sequence and I was thinking about adding it into the video but I thought I'd save that experience for people who are probably going to play the game in the future. Once we arrive at the hotel and explore for a while we make contact with a Federal Emergency Management Agent or FEMA for short. We're told that a snowstorm is approaching so what turns out to be a quick visit to a hotel has ended up with us being trapped here for the next few days. So from the beginning of being trapped in the hotel, we're in somewhat constant communication with this FEMA agent. They give us updates, they help us with little tasks around the hotel, and you know the way that you communicate with them is through telephone calls, very similar to Firewatch. What is this, a joke? And it's at this exact moment that I feel the game starts to get weak. The hotel level that the devs have made is brilliant. The way the hotel looks, the way it sounds, you know, with the subtle background music that they bring in every now and then, it all builds tension. And that's what is brilliant. But they choose to push the narrative forward more with these communications via the phone calls than they do with the environment that they've made. Now, don't get me wrong, you can explore the hotel pretty much to your heart's content. There's a few, you know, places that are blocked off here for obvious reasons, you know, that's where you go a little bit later on. But they don't utilise it enough. You can tell a lot of attention has gone into where certain in-game props have been placed. And if you've ever worked in like a hotel environment before, you'll notice that things are where they're supposed to be. A lot of time has been put into it. I, I, I personally feel they haven't used it as, as well as they could have. If you're going to tell your story in a similar way to what Firewatch did, you've got to get two things right. Number one, you've got to have a real good story. This game has a it has a brilliant story. There's no question about this game's um, how how well the story overall is written. The second thing that you've got to have is you've got to have good pacing. And I I personally feel that the way that the game paces the narrative, they force it on you too quickly. They could have quite easily have you explore a bit more and come to certain conclusions on your own or you know, find out certain revelations without them basically telling you, you know, pretty much blunt to your face. It almost feels that they're trying to tell you the end before you're even ready to get there. So with the game's midsection hastily rushed, in my opinion, we arrive at the end. The main revelation is basically to find out the circumstances surrounding Rachel Foster's death. Uh, I'm not going to say much more about that from here, because I don't want to give any spoilers away. I will say, it has the game has a really weak midsection, but the end, it hits. 
it's 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 good. It's um, some people might might not enjoy it. You might not enjoy it for probably like emotional reasons. I, I'm desensitized. I've been on the internet a long time. You know, so I'm fine with it. Um, but some people might find the way that the game closes out. They might find it a bit much. Uh, the game has two alternate endings, but both endings basically happen in the same sort of scenario. So you're in a certain, a particular scenario, and you got one or two choices. Um, some people might not like it. Some people might get upset with it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm personally, you know, fine with it. Um, if I was to have any sort of comment on the way that the game ends. I would say that with one of the main themes being suicide, I don't know. I don't know if I would have ended my game in in the circumstances that it happens. I'm fine with it, but some people are going to be, you know, not fine with it. We're nearly at the end of the video now, so let's just have a recap of some of the points that I want to get across about this game. The graphics are brilliant. The hotel environment is fantastic. The sound and ambient noises are on point, no and not once the while playing did I encounter any sort of bugs or glitches or even FPS drop. The, ga the game is solidly made, no question about that. And to top it all off, the game has a brilliant story. Now for some of the criticism. The story might be well written, but it's not well paced. Clocking in at around 3 hours to complete, I personally think it's, it's a little bit undercooked. Know, pop it back in that oven for an extra hour, bring it back out, tell that story just a little bit slower. I think if they focused less on the Firewatch approach and maybe took an approach of a game called the Paints Creek Killings, uh, if you've never played that game before, it's very good, um, the game would have benefited a lot more from it. Even with all that being said, the suicide of Rachel Foster is still worth a playthrough. It has a really good price point. So if you ever see it on sale, it's definitely worth picking up. But that doesn't mean it's not worth its full retail price. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to stick around for future content, make sure to click that subscribe button. I don't know, it just, if, it just feels like it was jabbing you the whole time. It doesn't feel like it you know, went for an uppercut or a hook, you know, or a fucking headbutt. It just, it just kept jabbing you all the way through. And nothing, nothing there hit me. I don't know.